Hello and welcome back. And that's right, I want to return to the subject today six months later. I mean, seriously. Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to return to the subject of the Synology DS923 Plus and comparing it against the QNAP TS464. Six months ago, I made a video, I think about 30, 35 minutes long, where I compared these two NAS in quite a lot of detail. I really deep dived into them. Now, I want to make it abundantly clear straight off the bat. I am not just going to repeat everything I've done in that video. Notwithstanding, it's going to waste your time. It'll be well annoying. Today's video, is about six months later than that. Had you bought it, what's changed in six months with these respective brands? Not just these two solutions, but the brands in general. What's good, what's bad, and ultimately six months since that last video, has anything changed about my viewpoint between these two for good or for bad? So straight away off the bat, we got to talk about that internal hardware there because when this device arrived on the scene, I think it would be fair to say that it ruffled some feathers. Why did it ruffle some feathers? Well, let's get that internal hardware there on screen. It was that AMD Ryzen processor. It was that dual core 2.6 gigahertz um, AMD embedded uh, Ryzen processor there. Dual core, four thread uh, that could be burst up to 3.1 gigahertz. It also arrived with four gig of memory as we all expected, but it was ECC memory that could be upgraded up to 32 gig. So, you know, really efficiency, uh, you know, uh, not efficient, a uh, really powerful level of memory capability there. And of course, ECC memory checking things along the way. Once you combine that ECC with things like its inclusion of BTRFS and the improvements that have been rolled in in DSM 7.2 that we'll talk about in a while, overall, that hardware has actually started to look a lot better in the six months since we last talked about it there. Um, indeed, it's also got those two M2 NVMe storage pools on the base that can be used four storage pools, those two M2 NVMe bays there. So six months beyond that, what changed? Well, that CPU inside there, it arrived in the little two bay, the DS723. But I would say six months on beyond that, I think people are still sort of annoyed that it didn't arrive um, with a Celeron or even a Pentium processor inside. I think they're even more annoyed that since it was released, Synology rolled out this NAS over here, the DS423 Plus, that had a Celeron processor inside, a quad core, but it, it was effectively a DS920 from summer 2022, with its wings clipped, no expandability, half the amount of memory there. Um, and overall, I think, although the feeling that some users have towards its lack of a Celeron and its change in the portfolio overall, towards more of a business solution rather than a home solution, something we sort of covered in the previous video. I think the, the virtues of that CPU have been made apparent. I think its higher transfer speed that we talked about in my video has borne fruit there. I think Synology's baffling position on those M2 NVMEs inside, capping them at Gen 3 times one performance there, and only still allowing their own M2 NVMEs to be used on those storage pools. Six months on, still sounds terrible to a lot of users. Frankly, no one is pleased about that. Um, but I would say that CPU isn't quite as hated, frankly, as it was when it was first launched. I think a lot of people kind of got past the lack of integrated graphics. Not everyone, but certainly some. And I think there are users out there that actually value a lot of those transfer speeds. But still, with this device, the 423 there, sort of taking it, uh, its place as the home fully featured prosumer solution, that still hasn't really won a lot of users over, I would say, um, six months later on. Now, six months later on for this, the QNAP TS464, I think if anything, the reverse has become true. This has become even more popular than it was. I've seen a lot of uh, just general tech sites and even NAS tech sites start to really list this a lot higher than they did six months ago in the eyes of users. Now, why is that? I think we should immediately talk about that. When the TS464 arrived on the scene for most users um, in the uh, first, you know, through, I think four or five months of 2022, Synology were, I'm sorry, uh, QNAP were kind of, in a real sticky PR wicket because of everything that had happened with Deadbolt and ransomware. And I think a lot of users had kind of gone, ooh, 
goodbye, QNAP, and stepped away from them in a big way because of the way QNAP handled themselves during that ransomware attack. They weren't the only ones that were attacked. Terramaster and Acer Store were attacked, but there's still no denying that QNAP, with things like semi-forced updates, the way uh, information was shared with their end user base, and indeed how they shared information when they were alerted about the vulnerability um, with end users and just general media was not great. And I think at the time of launch, the TS-464, despite being a very appealing hardware NAS, I think the general consensus when it launched, um, I think almost a year ago now, was, oh, that's some great hardware. It's a real shame about the ransomware, though, isn't it? That was the consistent feeling. And even six months ago, when we compared these two, there was just no avoiding that topic. But now, six months later, right now, recording this at the end of April 2023, I'll say that this has seen real popularity in sales numbers there and notwithstanding because the intel seller on the inside the n5105 is an appealing cpu indeed and the four gig of memory that can be upgraded to 16 gig although not ecc is more affordable and supports a lot more third-party memory and the m2 nvme slots inside uh pci gen 3 times one locked because of the bandwidth uh, the bandwidth afforded to the pci lanes and not an artificial uh, limitation but still the same 1000 megs per slot were always available for storage pools. Uh, right there on day one, they were always available for caching and always available for their Q-tier system, which allows you to really take advantage of a lot more things, but I'll get onto Q-tier later on. Overall, I would say that the hardware architecture of this, it's not that it's become more popular, but QNAP has, you know, tried to take a lot of their lumps. And I, don't, I think it will be many years before they remove the stigma of ransomware from their brand for now. But I will say they've done a, a lot towards, you know, their PR in terms of changing QTS and its default security values while are enabled and disabled by default, rolling in a lot of individual applications dedicated to anti-ransomware, anti-intrusion uh, as well. More on that later on when we talk about QTS 5.1. And I would say in terms of the hardware, although the perception of the hardware wasn't really bad to start with, I will say that due to uh, probably a little bit more time going by since the ransomware attack, they have, this system has probably appeared a lot higher on a lot of people's shopping lists than it was six months ago there. Ultimately, between two of them, between the two of them, there's still a they've got different target audiences in mind, I think, now more than ever. And I will add, in terms of pricing, they've both balanced a lot more from their initial launch prices. With the 923 arriving way, way too close to the, to the 6630 mark, now balancing at that 550 570 mark and the ts464 arrived a ridiculous 650 to 700 um price figure in a lot of regions that unluckily six months later has balanced a lot now down to that 550 570 as well so these two are kind of at the same price point now but whereas in the case of the synology going more business tier and introducing the DS423 there for the home media user, the TS464 still remains with its similar hardware architecture, but also rolled out a little while later down there, the TS453E system there, which was a lot more media-centric focused with a different quad-core seller on the J412. So with QNAP doubling down on that hardware architecture and its popularity there overall. Now, in terms of ports and connectivity between these two devices, that is going to be another area where six months later on, some decisions that have been made will be viewed very differently. Now, in the case of the Synology, we start with the Synology there, that arrived with those two 1GBE ports by default there. And on our video, we talked a lot about how 1GBE Come on, it's a bit long in the tooth. We should have seen an upgrade. And it arriving with 1GBE really annoyed some people. And I think right now, six months on, if anything, it's annoyed them twice as much. All Synology would have had to have done was introduce a USB to 5G adapter, introduce a USB to 2.5G adapter. Hell, their router systems arrive with 2.5 gig of Ethernet on them. Now, there is the ability to upgrade to 10GBE. That's fantastic, but that's an optional modular upgrade that when it was launched, was hard to find and more expensive than a traditional PCIe upgrade card. Six months on, that card is still hard to get hold of, and 
It's even more expensive. The 129, 139 that I quoted in that video is now closer to 150, 160 in some regions for that PCIe upgrade. They haven't introduced an SFP version of it. They're still just the copper. And I just think in terms of the ports and connections, not only the network connections, but the USB ports on this still being five gigabits per second, six months on, I don't have much more to say that I didn't say in the previous video and certainly not really anything further positive from that. Six months on, this is a good box, but in terms of external network connectivity, you just get that feeling that it's just waiting to be upgraded and buying it in its default state is either suck up a compromise or suck up an additional 150 at least spend there on an upgrade there great software the hardware inside lovely stuff but those ports and connections just leave me slightly underwhelmed now in the case of the ts464 as i mentioned six months ago and i mentioned 12 months ago in the original review the ts464 its ports and connections they're future proof as f Notwithstanding the fact that it's 2.5 GBE by default and the HDMI output there for the KVM and the HD station application, it's 60 frames per second 4K, although I wish they'd do more with that software, more on that later on. But the system also arrives with USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, 10 gigabit on the front and the back with a wider degree of USB supported devices. Everything, again, from wireless dongles to um, USB to 2.5 and 5 GBE adapters there, external storage adapters there, and, you know, office printers, peripherals that sort of thing they're all still supported to a wide degree there's usb 2 ports there to be used in conjunction with the kvm setup but there's also a pcie upgrade slot that normally has a cover on it but i've lost it and that pcie slot although supporting a bunch of third party cards is qnap's own cards and since six months ago that video came out even more qm2 cards have arrived m2 nvme cards that have got two and four slots on board 10 GBE, 2 port 10 GBE, combo cards that have got NVMe and 10 GBE ports. And although a lot of those denser cards aren't supported on this, such as the 4 M2 NVMe and 2 port 10 GBE Gen 4 card, which pff, insane, you can still use a lot of the existing Gen 2 and Gen 3 QM2 cards in the system. Don't get me wrong, you've got to make sure, as this is a Gen 3 times 2 slot, that you factor in bandwidth restrictions that are going to limit the amount of bandwidth you can push through at 2000 megs but it's better to have that option and particularly given that Synology has a lot of upgrade cards ranging from their E10 G20 card over here that is a combo card at Gen 3 times 8 which of course is too much bandwidth to this I just feel this system lacks a lot of the upgrade in its network connections that it could have. It's given it a network upgrade module slot there, but it's delivered in such a way that utilizing their adapter card that it arrives with it, which again, lest I remind you, is proprietary and although incredibly easy to install, is still just available in a one port copper form. And as it stands, and six months on, nothing else can be done with that port there. I just find that the ports and connections on the DS923 have not aged well, even after just six months, in a way that the ports and connections on the TS464 have maintained a high and usable quality for a lot of users there. But now we've got to talk about where things get a little bit of flop, because we've got to talk about software. Now, with the software... Again, I could repeat myself a lot, as I said in other videos, and I'm going to take for granted that a lot of you have either watched the original video that I mentioned at the intro and link below, or that you followed other videos before, but an incredibly brief praise would be that the Synology platform is the better software overall. It just is. With DSM 7.1, there's more applications, it's more user-friendly, you just get the feeling more money and time has been spent on it. It is just a better, more usable tool with more client applications and indeed great applications to replace third-party tools out there so you can still keep within the Synology ecosystem there. In the case of the TS-464, it is a good customizable platform in QTS, the EXT4 version of the software this arrives with, but there's just occasional inconsistencies inconsistencies in the graphical fidelity of the GUI, inconsistencies between different windows and applications, and just a general feeling sometimes that a lot of the apps and services are being developed at a different speed sometimes, with some newer applications not arriving or remaining in beta anywhere near long enough before they should be accessible for a lot of users with their live data. I mentioned earlier on about HD Station, AFAN 
fantastic application that is a parallel running HDMI output for this running to the side of the network connection. So everyone else via the network or remotely on the internet, hundreds of users can connect with this at the same time. And while that's going on, parallel is a completely separate GUI accessible over the HDMI port with a remote control, USB keyboard and mouse, run multimedia, VM surveillance, you name it. What's the problem? That HD, so uh, HD station software doesn't get anywhere near as many updates as it sh should, and it's feeling very dated, and a lot of the applications in it are broken, particularly in the App Center. They, and when they're not you know, inconsistent with the existing recently updated applications, it leads to a very inconsistent and often unstable experience there with the uh, HDMI output. QTS as a whole, Let's move to the six months till now. I would say with both of these uh, services, QTS and DSM, they've both seen recent significant updates six months since my previous video in QTS 5.1 and DSM 7.2. Now in DSM 7.2, that introduced write once, read many mechanics there for immutable and long-term backups. Um, it introduced volume encryption there that allows you to create encrypted volumes that require a key to be unlocked. Although, at least in the beta stages, the way that was managed with localized key storage wasn't great. Uh, they changed Docker. Uh, towards Container Manager, which is basically a modified GUI of the existing Docker application. Then you've got Remote Erase within the Synology Drive application, an introduction of Backup Cloud, uh, a cloud management platform there. A lot of this may still be in beta when this video goes out. And overall, DSM has just seen improvements in its GUI, very small improvements, and with the individual apps and services, just little things being introduced into DSM within the last six months, that, although good, are not exactly life-changing for a lot of users. Really, it's just the volume encryption and the support of write once, read many that most people would be quite chuffed about. And of course, more and more systems arriving with SD, um, NVMe SSD pools being supported, like on this one. Now, QTS 5.1, I would say, is a little bit more of an aggressive um, change in terms of the um, update from QTS 5. And in QTS 5.1, six months since that last video, one, the GUI and the way all those applications and the uh, just general um, utility of the graphical user interface has improved exponentially. It's still not perfect and still not as smooth as that as the Synology platform, but still pretty darn good. You've got proactive drive failure within 5.1 now. so. You know, a little bit like a hot spare, but more than that, you can have a drive inside the system that when all the other drives are being spotted for many, many, many different kinds of uh, predicted failure indicators there. And this is not even using a subscription service. This is built in. The system will see if a drive is showing signs that it might die, might die soon. And rather than wait for the drive to die and then introduce a hot spare or manually introduce a drive and then go for the RAID rebuild process, a proactive drive failure will then start copying the data from the drive that's showing the odd dodgy sign onto this healthy drive and then on a reboot just introduce that drive in and get rid of the slightly duffer drive therefore removing any kind of raid failure there uh time sorry raid sorry uh raid degradation uh, depreciation in resource consumption and time that it's going to take as well as the worry during a raid rebuild that one of the other drives might get knackered they also introduced their own uh, qnap authenticator app for, you know that is comparable to lots of two-step authentication but also passwordless entry there they also tightened a lot of the security there with a lot of default um, settings there reduced significantly on baseline um, setup, including a uh, disabling of the admin account. Then you've got delegation of admin powers, which at least in the 5.1 beta I used, needs to have a time limit on it. It's not been done as good as possible. But one thing that did see an upgrade was Q-tier to introduce um, a third tier to the Q-tier system, allowing you to use SAS, SATA, and U.2, but also just with a few different variables, create a much better uh, multi media uh, multi storage media single storage pool for your hot your warm and your cold storage inside they've both introduced snb multi channel and they both introduced a number of different um kind of protocols uh, that have been innovated on within the last year to year and a half from you know uh, like microsoft rolling out different protocols and improvements on existing protocols but i will say in terms of upgrades on both of these platforms within the last 6 months both of them if anything, have become more appealing in terms of software in DSM 7.2 and QTS 5.1. But I will still stand by my point in the previous video that when it comes to software, the Synology still absolutely smashes it overall with the QNAP 
still pretty darn good but obviously as you can see from most of this video the majority of my emphasis on this is always going to be about the hardware more than it's going to be about the software maybe that will change in another six to twelve months we'll have to wait and see but this has been six months on comparing the Synology DS93 Plus versus the QNAP TS464. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe you did buy one of these six months ago and you'd like to share your experience with other users below in the comments. Let me know. Other than that, there are links below that will take you to Amazon pages for both of these. If you've enjoyed this video and you're, you know, it has helped you and you were going to shop at Amazon anyway, please use those links to take you there. The result is it won't cost you anything extra and anything can I mean anything you buy will result in a kickback coming to here at NAS Compares where it's genuinely just me and any the web guy running these things doing a video a day an article every day and the free advice section it helps us do what we do and we're eternally grateful other than that if you do need help free advice section link below free community support uh, support forum as well down there and other than that have yourselves a lovely week